Now for the last of my story problems for now. Uh, as you notice, this is one that showed up in a practice for my Gen Chemies. And this one says that pharmaceuticals often require carriers to deliver the drug, whatever it may be. And this is true, actually. A lot of um, cancer drugs and that kind of thing, they often require some kind of carrier molecule to actually deliver the drug. It's actually a major area of research right now, though none of the compounds are this simple. Uh, in the attempt to create a new drug, 13.5 grams of potassium oxide was reacted with 23.58 grams cobalt-3 nitrate. Ah, so this is a stoic problem. I've got two masses, no solution stuff. This is just good old-fashioned stoic. In this experiment, 8.1 grams of the cobalt product was recovered. Is this reaction a viable path for industrial production? Use percent error, percent yield, and excess reagent calculations to prove your decision. So this means that I need to figure out how much solid products could be theoretically produced and then see how, they w how well they did compared to this experimental value that they actually achieved. So this one I'm going to work out by hand the long way or longer way. The problem said that we were mixing potassium oxide and cobalt nitrate. So mixing these two things together. Let's see, potassium, that's a plus one. Nitrate is also a plus one. Cool. Cobalt and oxygen, two, three. So this is the cobalt solid they were talking about. Balance that real quick. Awesome. So this is going to be good old-fashioned stoic. I need to know how much product can I theoretically make from those two masses. So first, I'm going to go ahead and do the path. We're going to start off with grams of our potassium oxide. Grams do no good. Got to go to moles. They're not asking me about potassium oxide. They're asking me about cobalt oxide. And since they gave me my experimental in grams, I should probably do this one in grams as well. So three arrows, three conversion factors. First one from here to here, this gram side is going to be my formula mass. Two potassiums, one oxygen gives me 94.2 grams of the potassium oxide per one mole of potassium oxide. Remember that anytime you do a formula mass, that's the mass of one mole of that compound. It's kind of like a deck of cards. There's 52 cards in one deck. This second conversion factor here between reactants and product comes from my balanced chemical equation. This is the only place that the coefficients come into play. Third and final step from here to here, again my formula mass crops up. Two cobalts, one oxide, gives me 65.86 grams of cobalt oxide per one mole. Cobalt oxide. It started me off with 13.5 grams of my potassium oxide. Here we go. Follow your units. Let them tell you what number goes where. One mole, K2O. So that uses both pieces of this. Moles K2O here means I need moles K2O here. And there's a 3 with those moles K2O. Other half of the conversion factor goes on top. One more step. Multiply all the way across the top, divided by all the way across the bottom, and we get 7.92 grams of my cobalt oxide. Now I don't know yet if that is the actual amount I produced because I had a second reagent. Now I need to do my path for that one, going from cobalt nitrate. So this is from my cobalt ion. Let's see how much solid it produces. So the path looks very similar. The only difference is that this time we're starting with cobalt nitrate. So, three arrows, three conversion factors. First one, grams to moles. Once again, that is a formula mass. So, three cobalts, three nitrogens, and nine oxygens. Give me my formula mass. Second conversion factor uses our coefficients from our balanced chemical equation. Notice there is a two in front of my cobalt up here in my equation. And finally comes that formula mass of my product once again. My 
I started off with 23.58 grams of my cobalt nitrate. So, formula mass, I need grams on the bottom. Other half of the conversion factor goes on top. Moles cobalt nitrate. Oh, you can't even see what I'm doing. I'm so sorry. And lastly, I need moles of cobalt oxide on the bottom, which leaves the formula mass on the top. Multiply all the way across the top, divided by all the way across the bottom, and we get approximately 7.98 grams of my cobalt oxide. This means that that first number was indeed my actual amount of solid product produced. This one does not happen. I ran out of my oxide before I could get to this number. That means my limiting reagent is my potassium oxide, and my nitrate, my cobalt nitrate, was in excess. Now the problem asks us to utilize percent error, percent yield, and excess reagent calculations to support our, the our claim of whether or not this is a good reaction for industrial uh, endeavors, if you will. So this is the amount of product that we actually produce, so just kind of put that number in the back of your mind for now. Let's go ahead and figure out our uh, percent error and percent yields real quick. So percent yield, the formula is your experimental, whatever you got in your experiment, divided by your theoretical, so whatever your stoic gave you. So according to my problem, my experimental value was 8.1 grams. My theoretical, I could only produce 7.92 grams. So I'm going to have a percent yield over 100, and that's not a good thing. 102.3%. This is not a good thing. This means that there's a contamination in my reaction. And particularly since this is for a drug company, that is bad. Bad news bears. No good. So right off the bat, this is not looking like a very good reaction for industrial uh, uses. Let's go ahead and do percent error. Let's see what that one tells us. That's going to be our experimental minus our theoretical that our stoic gave us, divided by our theoretical times 100. So that's 8.1 minus 7.92 divided by 7.92 times 100 equals... Ah, camera battery, please don't die yet. Let me get through this problem. So we only have a 2.27% error. That's pretty good. That's not bad. Not bad at all. However, though, again, when, when you're doing uh, something for a drug, that still might be a little bit high. Since, again, we're hoping to use this in a pharmaceutical context. So all of this is lending credence to whether or not we say, yes, this can be produced uh, industrially or not. And so far, I'm leaning towards no. We got a high, too high of a percent yield, which means there's something else going on here that shouldn't be. Not to mention, this is probably still a bit high for drug purity, if you think about the purity of uh, how pure you want something that you ingest to be. The last bit is we can use our excess reagent calculation to figure out if there was anything wasted. So let's figure out using our um, our grams of our cobalt product. Grams are no good, got to go to moles. Since my excess reagent was cobalt nitrate, let's figure out how much of this I actually needed to make my product. So let's go to moles, cobalt, nitrate, and all the way to grams, cobalt nitrate. So my first conversion factor is going to be back to my cobalt oxide in moles. Second one is using our balanced chemical equation. If you notice, this path is exactly backwards from our cobalt nitrate path that we did before in the stoic section. This one here, it's exactly backwards. Third one is our formula mass of that sucker. All 
All right, 7.92 grams. I'm going to skip the monikers here. So let's see. I need formula mass of cobalt nitrate, one mole on top. Cobalt oxide goes on the bottom. Cobalt nitrate on the top. Mole on the bottom. Grams on the top. All right, so let's see what that comes out to. 7.92 times 2 times 244.96 divided by 165.86. Oh, look at that. 23.39 grams used. Well, I started off with 23.58 grams minus that 39. Whoops. 23.39 minus 23.58. So 0 0.19 grams of that cobalt nitrate, gosh darn it, left over. That's actually pretty darn good. I didn't waste much of my cobalt, that excess reagent at all. There's not a whole lot left over. So that would seem to suggest that this was a pretty good reaction because I used almost everything that I put into my reaction. But again, this over 100% yield would make me skittish if I was the quality control officer for this reaction. I would not recommend this to be produced because of that high percent yield. There's got to be some kind of contamination in this. So you would write all of that in words on this problem in order to get full credit. So this is another application of how our stoichiometry and chemistry can be used in a slightly more applicable way something that can be applied if you go into quality control or R&D. So if you have any questions on this problem or other ones, please feel free to leave them in the box. Uh, happy stoiking!